Hi, everybody. I'm Alicia with Sun Lighten, and we are so excited to be on Dr. Joel Kahn's Facebook Live page on this Thursday, on this Wednesday night, the eve of Valentine's Day. So, Dr. Kahn, thanks for having us on. Well, there's so much to talk about. We might be here all the way through mm -hmm. Thursday night, so you might have got it right. Thank you. Well, at least it's it's a tie-in with Valentine's Day, so we can talk all about heart health and and things we can do to keep people healthy. Love dub. It's a hot topic. It's uh, it is. Hey, that's right. Awesome. Well, let's just jump right in. You know, we hear about so many different illnesses and and health conditions. And since February mm -hmm. is heart heart healthy month, uh, how big a, how big an issue is health uh, heart disease? Yeah, it's big enough. It should uh, take our focus all 12 months a year, not just one, not just the shortest month of the year. We should get the longest month of the year, the heart month, or maybe the longest uh, season of the year as such. Um, but, you know, it's so important to talk about heart disease. Everybody listening, everybody that's going to watch this once it's recorded, uh, is the new data out in the last two weeks is that depending how the definition is, more than 50% of Americans, and there may be people in other countries that are watching this too, but more than 50% of Americans have cardiovascular disease. That's clogged oh activities, that's high blood pressure, that's stroke, that's uh, blockage or circulation problems in their legs and other areas, over 50%. So anybody watching this, either you have heart disease, cardiovascular disease, or you know, the person you know closest in your life has cardiovascular disease, it's that common. Um, and that's a problem because it is still a like, hundred years in a row, 2018 to, I guess it's now 101 years, uh, cardiovascular disease has been the number one cause of death in the United States, statistically, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we don't want cardiovascular disease, we don't want the number two cancer, all causes of cancer are number two to cardiovascular disease. And the real, real passion and fire in my life as a cardiologist is that it is preventable and identifiable at a young age and reversible. So it's not saying we should be passive about it, wait to the day that you're in an emergency room and find out at age 48 or 61 or 57 that you are clogged up. You should find out early in life. In fact, you should find out that you're not clogged up because this is largely a disease that we have exploded in frequency because this great thing called the Western lifestyle or the standard American diet or stressed out crazy, diet. crazy people grabbing food everywhere and eating, <laughs> living poorly. So let's stop that. Take care of your body. It's heart month. Take care of your heart. Most amazing organ. This little thing sits there, you know, 60, 70, 100,000 times a day, gallons and gallons, enough to fill a swimming pool every day. 50,000 miles of arteries, tennis courts full of healthy lining called the endothelium. And it just works until it stops working. And if we got a little clue, if we had like a little Bluetooth or a little Wi-Fi that, you know, just uploaded to our phone and said, you know, you got 10 days older today because you weren't very good to yourself. You know, oh my gosh. you got a little Bluetooth message that said, man, you actually, you're half a day younger today because you had your broccoli and you went to the gym. And you got eight hours of sleep, but you know we don't have that till we have crushing chest pain, and it's over. So, yeah, I can oh talk. Two thousand people a day in the United States die of cardiovascular disease, and the most mm -hmm. conservative estimates is a thousand a day are totally preventable. More reasonable oh estimates say eighty percent, so sixteen hundred or two thousand just didn't need to die today, and that is a message that I, you know, will get online and teach as often as I can. Wow, that's amazing. Did that 50% number surprise you? Um, it surprised me how low it was. That actually came from really? <coughs> Center for Disease Control, a very conservative government organization in Atlanta. <coughs> I'm drinking hibiscus tea, which is probably one of the healthiest teas. Hey, cheers to you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, so well, let me more, ask you. Your more aggressive estimates are 80% of heart attacks are preventable. We've known that for wow. decades. In decades, we just don't have a system to teach people all the easy things they can do, and some are a little tricky to uh, keep their arteries clean and young. Yeah, go next question. I apologize. 
No, that's okay. That's okay. It's so interesting. So you keep going. Um, but but just to get to it, so we have you hear stories about people who've been suffering and really have a lot of illnesses, and you know then they develop heart disease. But then there's the story of you know the really healthy person who runs marathons or a triathlete, and they're always in the gym, and they get heart disease. So so is it common to have no warning, or can you always expect there to be a buildup before you find out? No, it's a good point. And for the majority of people, the first sign of this serious problem, particularly clogged arteries that make you prone to a heart attack or even dropping dead, the first warning is the day that that develops. And maybe, wow. a, day, maybe a day or two before, felt a little tired, a little short of breath, a little sweaty, maybe a little vague. But this, you know, suddenly get this terrible oppressive cinder block on your chest and if you survive that and call 911, you get to a hospital and get treated like a trauma patient. No, it's been going on for years and years and years. So we just read in the news in the past week, at least I did, Susan Lucci, what was that, all my children. Yes, Erica King. She had that disease for years and years till the couple of days she felt bad and went to a New York hospital and got a couple of stents. And she's lucky because other people like her whether they're famous actors, actresses, sports athletes, or they're just school teachers and post officers, uh, they have the same scenario. They might drop dead, or they might have a massive heart attack that leaves them weak and unable, or they might end up like her, and now they get stents and medication. And uh, you know, she doesn't have the same lifespan of a 72-year-old woman that doesn't have stents. I wish her well. I don't know her, but yeah, the typical would be uh, very little warning, but it's there for years and it's preventable. So. We got to, you know, you're 50 years old, you get a mammogram. You're 50 years old, you get a colonoscopy. You're 50 years old, maybe your blood sugar's checked to make sure you're not a raging diabetic. But nothing's done about this little amazing 100,000 heartbeat a day organ because we have this kind of silly medical system. So, yes, we need to protect our heart in heart month and every other month. And we need to learn how to identify heart disease very early. Wow, that, that is so important and it's so great to hear, you know. So so when you said that a lot of it can be preventative, I think you said 80% of heart disease can be prevented. So what are some things that people can do? I mean, starting today or starting tonight, um, what do you suggest? Yeah, and there's no guessing actually. There's, there's a series of studies that say, what are the habits? It's the word lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. It's not called death style. We actually practice mm -hmm. a lot of death style. Lifestyle, there's some very large studies that say, what are the habits you need to uh, kind of accumulate? The more, the merrier, get all of them to prevent heart attacks. And actually they are the same habits that extend your lifespan, prevent cancer, prevent type two diabetes, prevent dementia. So for example, there's a couple of studies out of Europe published in the last five years. If you do about five or six things, one, don't smoke. Okay, that will prevent heart attacks. Number two, you keep Does your- Does shock you, Dr. Khan, that people still smoke? <laughs> It's, uh, it's not a very health-promoting plan. Blows uh, my mind. <laughs> but back to number two. <laughs> number two is keep your body weight optimal. That is a tough one. The definition is by what's called the BMI or the body mass index 20 to 25. But that's the goal. Number three, that you get fitness 30 minutes a day. And now it's kind of merging. Go to the gym or work out in your basement 30 minutes a day. But stand or move or do yard work or dance or take a walk at lunch break. You also got to move during the day, but 30 minutes a day. Number four is, it's coming the map, is sleeping seven to eight hours a night, not four hours a night. Uh, you will age quicker. You will be overweight. You will have more blood pressure, and you will have, be more prone to develop clogged arteries if you sleep four or five hours a night. Seven to eight is the sweet spot. Number five, strangely, is actually a little bit of alcohol, but not too much. I don't make these studies up, but when they do the whole analysis, the people that answered, I have a drink five, six nights a week or less, have less heart disease than those that say, I never drink. And we certainly don't want people drinking in excess. And the last one is my favorite. Those people that answer, I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, whole grains, peas, beans, and lentils, whole food plant sources, five, six servings a day have less heart attacks. If you do all of those, heart attack rate drops 85% over decades and decades. If you do none of those, you're in trouble. If you smoke and never exercise and eat hot dogs and drink six drinks a day and 
uh, sleep four hours a night, you know, you're not on a good path. There's always an exception to the rule. So that lifespan has been studied by the Harvard School of Public Health. It'll add years to your life if you do the same lifespan. It's been studied in Japan. It'll add years to your life. So it's all one beautiful web of very good self-care. There's things you can add to that, fancy blood tests, fancy tests. I do all those in my own preventive cardiology clinic. But the lifestyle is the strongest component of all. And all of those things you mentioned feel so good. None of them are really dramatic or really that hard to add into a lifestyle. Yeah, you know, behavior change. Famous anthropologist Margaret Mead said, I can change a person's religion easier than I can change a diet. And we were very famous, you know, deceased uh, uh, author and such. So, you know, if it's your habit, it's bacon and eggs and it's fried chicken and it's, um, you know, excess alcohol and I have to have cheese on everything in my life. You know, you need to wake up and ask yourself, is that promoting your health and do you want to be on medication or not or be in the medical system or be free of the medical system? So this are but breaking habits, and some of them are food is addictive, and smoking is addictive, alcohol can be addictive. So you need to have a social support, and you know you need to be patient with yourself. So little baby steps. It can take a year to get a person off the of cheese. It's such yes. a food. yeah, that is so true. And I, we just have a question on Facebook Live. What is your personal favorite exercise? Um, all of them. So Perfect. I do work out pretty much every day. I. Now I tend to work out in my home, even though I have usually one or two gym memberships nearby. It's just so much more time efficient. But I'll do 15 minutes of yoga, followed by 15 minutes of pretty intense, high-intensity cardio. The next day I'll do 15 minutes of yoga and some pretty heavy weights. Um, there may be a day that I do just yoga or balance, but um, something every day. Um, you know, when the weather clears up here, which we seem like we're in the Arctic freeze in Michigan where I'm at, Oh, I'll paddleboard and kayak and such. I, I love nature. Exercise in nature just adds mm. some element of blood pressure control and just appreciation. I totally agree with that. So if you had to kind of talk just briefly tonight, what would you say are some of the biggest messages about heart disease prevention? What can people take notes about and really remember that they can that they need to know? Yeah, real quick, I call it when I lecture to the public, which is common and it's heart month, PDR. P, heart disease is preventable. We just talked about a lifestyle. We talked about uh, you know taking good self-care and being mindful. You know, you have this little organ in there that's beating nonstop working for you. It's the number one thing that will fall apart in your life and leave you disabled, leave you unable to enjoy, you know, the last years of your life fully or maybe cut your life short, so be mindful. Number two is detection. It's very easy to detect this disease 10 years before you're in the emergency room, 10 years before you're having an emergency bypass heart attack. Stent. So it's partly self-assessment, how is your lifestyle, those bullet points we went through. It's advanced blood work. Do you know what, not just your cholesterol, but it's called your advanced cholesterol, your particle numbers? Do you know your three-month blood sugar, your hemoglobin A1C? Do you know your inflammation, your high-sensitive C-reactive protein? Do you know your homocysteine level, your lipoprotein A, your vitamin D? Honestly, all these labs are available in any lab and almost always under everybody's insurance. Uh, anybody just go to the internet, look up Joel Kahn, heart attack prevention. There's plenty of articles about like what lab tests to ask your doctor to get to get a little bit of better. That's detection, but even more important, in every community that's listening right now, you have a hospital that has a CT scanner, CAT scanner, and you're a healthy 48-year-old person. You have no known heart issues, but you smoked in college and your blood pressure is a little high at the doctor and your cholesterol is 225 and then your doctor says it should be a little lower. You go for a CAT scan of the heart. There's no IV, there's no injection, there's no iodine, there's no exercise. You lie down, you go in a CAT scanner that's not claustrophobic. They tell you to hold your breath for 15 seconds and you go home. You don't even take your shirt off. And that wow. costs $100 or $75. Some cities it's free or $50. Coronary artery calcium scan, heart artery calcium scan, heart artery calcium CT scan. Those are all names for it. And it's widely available and it's usually not in the insurance system. You'll probably have to pay those uh, reasonable dollars. You know, you go out to dinner and $75 to 
take the same $75 and find out if you're on a path towards potentially disastrous heart disease or potentially wonderful, healthy lifestyle. You want to be what's called a zero, no detectable heart disease. So that has been around for 15 plus years. I've ordered thousands and thousands and thousands of them on patients. But only recently, a major medical societies like the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology said, you know, if you've got some risk in your life, get it checked. Don't wait. Get it checked. Get this early heart CT scan. You may have to talk to your doctor and get a prescription. Your doctor may not know much about it. But really, right now, there's this American Heart Association statement. In the last two days, the guidelines are supposed to guide doctors into what they recommend to people have included this heart calcium CT scan. So there's never been a better time. Or if you're not sure at all about it, there's a movie on the internet called The Widowmaker Movie. Oh, what wow. Positive, powerful documentary about why the CT scan might save your life. And I encourage anybody to uh, watch it on Netflix. Wow. Or some I'm, maybe not on Valentine's Day, but maybe over the weekend. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and do you recommend getting that test yearly or is it something that once you get it, you're good? Once, maybe 10 years later again. You know. Okay, great. So, so, so something I love talking about is infrared saunas and specifically sunlight and saunas. So I would love to know your perspective for people who right now are trying to avoid heart disease. So they're being preventative. How can the infrared sauna be helpful for them? Yeah, so you know, I had traditional cardiology training, University of Michigan, University of Texas. Uh, it was hot, but they didn't teach me about sauna. <laughs> so about two years ago that I started to do some study to add to what I already knew. I knew I had, I had a prescription pad and I had balloons and stents and I had stress tests, but I just knew there was more out there that could help my patients. So in my studies, I came across some data from Japan that there was a kind of accepted and standard therapy of heart disease using sauna, using infrared sauna. It looked like a little cedar wood box I had in my health club that had the Arizona hot cold <laughs> corner, but it wasn't the same, that there were panels in the wall of this little wood line box that were infrared panels and they emitted infrared energy. And that people brighter than me, again, beginning in Japan about 30 years ago, had reason to believe if sunshine is good for you, which it is, if sunshine promotes a healthy heart, which it does, uh, maybe other forms of energy through your skin also promote health. And in fact, uh, the infrared spectrum of light is the one that seems to penetrate our skin and activate our energy systems. So they started studying it, basic science, it's called animal models, it's called then human models. And when I started studying this seven, eight years ago, so there was actually serious science that if you had serious heart disease and you were introduced to the idea of getting into an infrared sauna a few times a week, your blood pressure might improve, your congestive heart failure might improve, serious. But then there was the healthy person, the healthy mm -hmm. person that wants to maintain uh, ideal body weight and uh, information that infrared sauna helps with that because 30 to 60 minutes in infrared sauna, maybe as many calories burned as you're gonna get at the health club. Um, and you can do both. You can mm -hmm. uh, be exercising, sit in infrared sauna. An infrared sauna tends to maintain normal blood pressure and people are struggling and people don't like to be on three medicines for the blood pressure. So infrared sauna helps you stay healthy and normal blood pressure. And um, I'm not a, the sky is falling chicken little kind of person, but you know, we've got, a difficult food uh, chain in this country in terms of trying to eat healthy and avoid chemicals and dyes and antibiotics and hormones. We've got air pollution. We've got water that might have lead and fluoride and other things in it that may not always be as healthy. We've got, they're called endocrine disrupting chemicals, but chemicals we're exposed to at thermal receipts and plastic bottles and uh, air fresheners and perfumes that these chemicals are in our body and I learned as I studied that one way to get them out of your body we all have some of them is to sweat profusely and an infrared sauna is more efficient and even exercise at promoting a sort of detoxification and that it's really a serious issue for general health for weight control uh, for feeling your energetic best during the day so all that data 
led me to start recommending in Detroit to my patients um, six, seven years ago that they could look at purchasing an infrared sauna for their home like I have, so they have easy access. And I love, I have the Sunlight Impulse. Uh, it's an amazing uh, health little unit. Uh, some people can find an infrared sauna, sometimes at a gym, at a wellness center, at a healing center, uh, where you might be able to buy a package uh, mm -hmm. uh, and all. So uh, I started encouraging people, and I just saw how much they enjoyed, you know, partly the relaxation, partly the therapeutic benefit of knowing they were doing something, and actually probably the result of detoxification and uh, mitochondrial regeneration. I mean, fancy terms, but the bottom line is, you might just be getting younger the more you use a sauna therapy. Now, some data recently from Finland says steam sauna may have benefits. It hasn't been studied with the exquisite detail that the Japanese database is. But yeah, sauna is the hottest thing in medicine, literally. And it's one of the best gifts you can give to yourself. And for us inside of our company, we like to say it's the feel good addiction because they're just so much more comfortable. Don't you agree than those steam saunas? You can really get in and almost like you can feel the tension and moving into that parasympathetic mode. Yeah, you know, you can do different things in infrared saunas. Some people have a unit big enough. They actually do a little bit of yoga or kettlebells. Mine isn't quite that big. A lot of people, you know, use it as their Zen time. I call it yep. sometimes saunitation. I meditate. <laughs> sauna. It's like I'm really cleaning everything out stress and mind body as well as physical. Um, a lot of people will read in an infrared sauna um, or listen to music, but you're not gonna do that uh, in a steam sauna, I agree. You're not gonna bring your laptop. Don't, no. bring, don't bring your phone in. But, no, you're counting down the minutes till the end in the steam yeah, sauna. People bring, people bring their Kindle in and all, but you know, I use it as a little refuge, but it's easier to do it. It may be more therapeutic to do it in an infrared sauna like sunlight. And, I agree. Well, we have just one more question for you because I know it's a it's a busy night. So we talked a little bit about people who are trying to be preventative with heart disease. What about people who who've already been diagnosed? Can the saunas help with those people as well? Yeah, well, that's that uh, Japanese database that okay. uh, is you know not everybody listening is in the medical field. There's a scientist necessarily, but you know there's the woo woo. There's the woo woo recommendations. You know. Argo with prune juice and you live the <laughs> But then there's science. Science says, you know, either we observe something, we wrote it up and got it in a medical journal, or we actually did research studies and all. And so there is such an impressive database of serious medical studies. We took sick people with you know clogged arteries or weak hearts or blood pressure or shortness of breath, lung disease. We introduced them and these are again largely studies in japan but they include studies in your hometown in kansas city and others and we introduced the idea that 15 or 20 minutes three four times a week in infrared sauna had potential benefit and as we studied people that's what we found and those studies are remarkable for the ability to offer a pathway to help reverse i'm very big in my preventive clinic in detroit called the con center that we don't try to manage disease. We try to reverse blood pressure. We try to reverse weight issues. We try to reverse cholesterol issues and heart blockage issues. There's a lot of reason to believe that does happen, but infrared sauna is just one of the great tools in the toolbox to facilitate that. Partly just the accelerated uh, elimination of toxins, of evil humors. You know, I think we're back to the medieval days and that there are evil humors in the body, but. Now we know the names, you know, phthalates and BPA and triclosan and other mercury and arsenic and cadmium. So the infrared sauna helps get rid of all those evil humors. I, I totally agree. Well, Dr. Khan, thank you so much for your time. We love being a part of your Facebook Live. We love partnering with you and, and working with all of your patients. Is there anything you'd like to close with? No, I think we covered it, but I really do encourage people that um, you know, I I selected a sunlight and sauna for my home uh, after doing a lot of research um, out of the fact you called me to see if I'd spend a few minutes talking about this. Um, I don't need the bonus. I already have one, but people listening might want one. And uh, no, I appreciate it. It's a really important message because we talk about don't smoke, fitness, eat well, sleep well, 
drink limited, uh, and keep your body weight. But the sauna is like, you know, that extra component that will just, you know, fast track you. I mean, if you're, if you're dedicated and using an infrared sauna, I can't imagine you walking into McDonald's and ordering a quarter pounder. I mean, you know, you're too much into the health world. So it's, it's really a great commitment to make and do something really good for you and your family and your friends. You know, I agree. Yeah. It makes you popular because once you get a sunlight and in your house, you'll have so many people come over who want to use it and play with it. I have one more question for you since you said you have the impulse. Do you have a favorite program or do you use a custom setting? Yeah, I actually, I like to let it heat up good and hot, although you don't need to because of the deep penetrating energies of infrared sauna. So I usually, I have an hour program that I usually about a half an hour to heat up and then I get in for the next 30 minutes. So awesome. um, but I've got lovely music and I have the speakers that. Uh, oh, you have the so sound, the ART. Yeah, and it's just like the whole situation. I'm waiting for my red light therapy add-on because uh, red light therapy as an addition to infrared is just like crazy wild that's something new that Sunlight has maybe i wasn't supposed to say that but uh, you can say it well the, the cat's out of the bag they're not going to oh, yell at you <laughs> thank you thank you so much well thank you for your time happy valentine's day happy heart month and we look forward to talking with you and talking with all of your people who call in and you can find us at sunlighten.com you got it thank, thank you, you. Bye-bye.